Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Hayes, the ASRM Education Specialist, and the following presentation is a review of our Practice Committee opinion on the management of obstructive azoospermia. Obstructive azoospermia, or OA, is defined as the absence of sperm in the ejaculate caused by a blockage in the male reproductive tract. It accounts for approximately 40% of all cases of azoospermia, and thus represents a significant barrier to reproduction for many male patients. OA may be either congenital or acquired. Congenital obstructions include congenital bilateral absence of the vas deferentia, or CBAVD, idiopathic epididymal obstruction, and ejaculatory duct obstruction. Acquired causes include vasectomy, infection, trauma, and iatrogenic injury. For patients with obstructive azoospermia, treatment options include either microsurgical reconstruction or sperm retrieval techniques. The two methods of microsurgical reconstruction for obstructive azoospermia include vasovasostomy, abbreviated as VV, and vasoepididymostomy, abbreviated as VE. VV is appropriate for patients with a history of vasectomy, iatrogenic vasal injury from either inguinal or scrotal surgery, or a solitary vasal obstruction from infection or trauma. A VE is indicated for idiopathic epididymal obstruction, secondary epididymal obstruction due to long-standing vasal obstruction, or atrogenic epididymal obstruction. Additionally, in patients with a history of prior vasectomy, if intraoperative vasal fluid does not contain sperm and has a thick, creamy consistency, VE should be performed. Regardless of the technique employed, all patients should be counseled about the option for intraoperative sperm retrieval and cryopreservation. This is of particular importance to patients undergoing bilateral VE, which is associated with a relatively lower reconstructive success rate. Cryopreserving sperm at the time of reconstruction may obviate the need for additional sperm retrieval procedures in the event of an operative failure. However, the associated costs should be thoroughly discussed with the patient preoperatively. Once the decision is made to proceed with microsurgical reconstruction for both VV and VE, the typical approach is via a 2 to 3 centimeter scrotal incision. However, either an inguinal approach or the use of a laparoscopic or robotic assistance may be appropriate in some settings. The vas deferens is then identified and mobilized. Vasal fluid should be assessed intraoperatively, and as previously mentioned, if the vasal fluid does not contain sperm and has a thick, creamy consistency, a VE should be performed. For both VV and VE, a microsurgical anastomosis is required. For a VV procedure, most surgeons perform a two-layer anastomosis, which involves approximating both the inner and outer muscular layers of each vas deferens. For a VE, although several techniques have been described, all involve pulling the epididymal tubule into the lumen of the vas deferens. Of these, the intussuscepted end to side technique is performed most commonly. Both procedures are typically well tolerated and complications are rarely reported. After reconstruction, postoperative semen analyses are typically obtained every 8 to 12 weeks. With the use of microsurgical techniques, success rates have been reported to be quite high. For example, for VV, patency rates have been reported to be as high as 97%, with pregnancy rates as high as 76%. For VE, the patency rates have been reported to be as high as 84%, with pregnancy rates of up to 44%. In the event of an operative failure, the patient and surgeon will need to discuss either attempting a repeat procedure, which may be technically challenging, versus surgical sperm retrieval. Sperm retrieval techniques can be used for unreconstructable causes of obstructive azoospermia, such as widespread and multifocal vasal injury, CBAVD, and ejaculatory duct obstruction. These techniques may also be used to treat post-vasectomy obstruction in patients that have either failed or declined microsurgical reconstruction. It is important to note that the surgical sperm retrieval compel the use of assisted reproductive technologies for conception and will require the female partner to undergo fertility treatments as well.
Sperm can be retrieved either from the epididymis or from the testis. Pregnancy rates with IVF, ICSI are similar regardless of the source of sperm. All of these techniques have relative advantage and disadvantages. And it is up to the surgeon and patient to decide which technique is most appropriate for achieving the desired reproductive outcomes. The two techniques used for obtaining sperm from the epididymis include percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration, known as PESA, and microsurgical epididymal sperm aspiration, known as MESA. The three techniques used for obtaining sperm directly from the testis include an open testicular biopsy, also known as testicular sperm extraction, or TESE, percutaneous testicular sperm aspiration, known as TESA, and percutaneous testicular biopsy, or PERC biopsy. PESA involves placing a butterfly needle directly into the head of the epididymis and aspirating epididymal fluid. This fluid is then inspected for sperm, which can be used for IVF ICSI. This technique has the advantage of being performed in the office with only local anesthesia. It is fast, repeatable, and does not require any microsurgical expertise. However, there is a risk of post-operative hematoma and damage to adjacent tissue. There is also a risk that only a few sperm will be retrieved. Microsurgical epididymal sperm aspiration, or MESA, involves making an epididymal incision and, using the aid of an operating microscope, identifying and aspirating the individual epididymal tubules that appear to be of the highest quality. This technique is associated with the highest pregnancy rates. It also allows for the retrieval of a large number of sperm and offers excellent cryopreservation results. There is a lower risk of hematoma with this technique as compared with PESA, since the puncture sites are either closed or cauterized during the procedure. However, it does require both microsurgical expertise and an incision, which may be associated with increased postoperative discomfort. In addition, it is a more costly procedure, which may be a barrier to some patients. Testicular sperm extraction, or TESE, involves making an incision directly into the tunica albuginea of the testis and harvesting the seminiferous tubules that are readily extruded. Again, this technique has the benefit of being performed without microsurgical expertise and is both fast and repeatable. Finally, TESA and PERC biopsies are performed using relatively similar techniques. A TESA involves placing a needle directly into the testis and aspirating it until tubules are retrieved. A PERC biopsy involves using a core needle biopsy gun to obtain a small cylinder of testicular tissue from which sperm can be retrieved. Again, both techniques have the benefit of being performed under local anesthesia and without microsurgical expertise. They are fast, repeatable, and associated with minimal postoperative discomfort. For the three techniques that involved obtaining sperm directly from the testis, there is a small risk of hematoma and testicular atrophy, since testicular tissue is being removed and disrupted. There is also the risk that only a small number of sperm will be retrieved. All of these risks, benefits, and alternatives should be thoroughly discussed with the patient prior to proceeding with sperm retrieval. For patients with obstructive azoospermia, the decision to pursue microsurgical reconstruction versus sperm retrieval is multifactorial and includes success rates, costs, risks of complications, and the baseline fertility of each partner. It is up to the provider to appropriately counsel each patient and help them navigate these options. As previously mentioned, in experienced hands, both microsurgical VV and VE can have excellent patency and pregnancy rates. For VV, the pregnancy rate can be as high as 75%. For bilateral VE, the pregnancy rate can reach 46%. Similarly, when sperm is surgically retrieved, fertilization rates range between 45 and 74%. While pregnancy rates are more variable, they can range from 22% up to 74%. IVF ICSI outcomes using surgically retrieved sperm are similar regardless of the source of the sperm and whether the sperm used are freshly extracted or frozen thawed. Female factors are also an important part of treatment selection. For both microsurgical reconstruction and sperm retrieval with IVF ICSI, live birth rates drop steadily with increasing maternal age. In fact, among couples that elect vasectomy reversal, female age has been found to be the most important predictor of success, with pregnancy rates being significantly worse when the female partner is over age 40. 
Additionally, we know that the average time to pregnancy after successful vasectomy reversal is 12 months, which can be limiting for couples with an older female partner and a subsequently shorter window of opportunity to conceive. Sperm retrieval with IVF ICSI may shorten the time to pregnancy and may therefore be a better option for couples with advanced maternal age or diminished ovarian reserve. Additionally, IVF ICSI may be preferable when the female partner has concomitant infertility factors that would also require female reproductive tract reconstruction, such as tubal disease or a history of tubal sterilization. Secondary male factor infertility may also affect treatment selection. For example, among men with infertility secondary to long-standing varicoceles, injury, trauma, previous surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or exposure to other spermatoxic medications, microsurgical reconstruction may not be feasible. However, sperm retrieval may still be possible and is the preferred treatment option. Additionally, for men with a history of vasectomy who wish to maintain their vasal contraception, IVF ICSI would be the more appropriate choice. Finally, cost-effectiveness is also an important component of decision-making for patients with obstructive azospermia. For couples who hope to conceive more than a single pregnancy, microsurgical reconstruction may be more economical, since it affords the opportunity for couples to conceive naturally. However, IVF ICSI may be a more effective use of resources among couples with female partners over age 40, or those with a diminishing ovarian reserve that are still deemed appropriate candidates for assisted reproduction. Additionally, if the couple desires pre-implantation genetic testing to avoid a potentially adverse and costly birth outcome, IVF ICSI is the most economical option. If costs for either microsurgical reconstruction or sperm retrieval with IVF ICSI are too high, adoption and donor sperm are alternative family building options that should be discussed. In summary, ultimately, both microsurgical reconstruction and surgical sperm retrieval are very successful techniques for overcoming obstructive azoospermia. The choice of treatment should be made by a well-informed couple in consultation with the reproductive specialists caring for both partners.